Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So this morning, there are a lot of things happening. And that's why as a Bitcoin holder, you need to brace for this and this and this. There's many things to talk about today. So let's just jump right in. Welcome, 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 guys. Good morning. Bitcoin still around the same place as yesterday. Still a little bit below 66,000. It almost seems like the market is waiting for something. What is that something? Well, that's what I want to talk about today. There is a big speak. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I guess there, there is going to be something. Yesterday, we had three FOMC members talk about what their views are uh, on inflation mm -hmm. and upcoming rate cuts and so forth, right? But none of that really matters. There's only one person that makes the decision, and that's Fed Chair Paul. And he's going to be speaking today around noontime. And people want to know what he's going to say, right? He already announced three rate cuts coming. We're in March already, or I should say, excuse me, April already. So is he going to push all three towards the end of the year? Or is the very first one going to start soon? So I think that's what the market is waiting for. Usually before Powell speaks, you do have some volatility. Mm -hmm. Like yesterday's U.S. market was not good. Very, very red. Obviously, Bitcoin was affected by it too. So we will see what happens after he speaks. If he continues to be dovish, well, then the market is going to come roaring back, right? So I think that's the big thing for this morning now there are a lot of banks that are already predicting when the first rate cut is going to come and almost unanimous i mean i don't know who mezu who is they should not even be on this list but or maybe they should i don't know who they are but they're the only ones that didn't guess uh or said that there's no rate cuts this year which is ridiculous because paul already said three but anyways it's basically unanimous that everyone thinks that the rate cut is going to come in June. We do have a FOMC meeting in May as well. So maybe maybe Powell surprise everyone says the first one's going to be May, right? Uh, but everyone thinks it's coming in June. So that's not too far off. That's only two months from now, right? And we're having a having event later this month. So that, I mean, if you think about it, it's perfect timing, right? You got a rate cut. Then you get a whole, I don't know, a flurry of money that starts flowing. That's only going to help Bitcoin's case. You know, it's, it's just going to drive Bitcoin higher. So uh, I think that's the big thing uh, of this morning. People want to know what Powell says and whether or not they should start buying now or later. I think that's what it really comes down to. Now, outside of this, a couple of surprising things that came out based on yesterday's price movement. Uh, number one, I did report yesterday that the U.S. government, who has confiscated a ton of Bitcoin from the Silk Road website back in the day, they did move a whole bunch of it. But it turns out they'd also sold a little bit of it, too. Right. And that caused a little scare. I think people thought that maybe they were going to dump the entirety of it, $2 billion worth. They didn't. It seems like they just sold like $133 million yesterday. So that was one of the things that came out yesterday. Does that mean the U.S. government or the Department of Justice is getting ready to, to dump more? Right. Maybe. Maybe not. We don't know. I mean, considering, look at what's been happening with Grayscale. They've dumped like $15 billion of the Bitcoin and the market is still strong. So even if the U.S. government dumps $2 billion, unless they just decide to purposely drop the price by selling it on Coinbase spot, for example, we're probably not going to see much of it. So that, that was one thing that came out yesterday. Something else that came out from yesterday um, that's very shocking is Grayscale did not lead the selling 
yesterday among the ETFs. In fact, it was ARK. ARK actually had a gigantic, enormous outflow day, and no one can figure out why. If you look at all the other ETFs, like BlackRock still took in 150 million, and Fidelity took in 45 million, and you know the others took in a lot. Grayscale, they you know their selling continues, but dropped significantly down to 82 million. But Arc, Arc sold 87 million, which is really really interesting. Don't know why, don't know why, but the reality is, you know what? It's just a blip. Blip in a road, just like Bitcoin's dip right now, blip in a road, because if you look at how much Bitcoin is being accumulated by these large companies and ETFs, you know that it's just a matter of time before there's not enough Bitcoin to go around and Bitcoin skyrockets to a new high, and then another high after that, and then another high after that. I mean, even with Grayscale selling like 15 billion or 14 billion worth of Bitcoin, they still hold 328,000 Bitcoin. Now, hopefully they don't have to sell all of it and give it to BlackRock, but you could see the difference between BlackRock and Grayscale not that far off, considering they are still buying by hundreds of millions per day. Right, but BlackRock is well above MicroStrategy now, and MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor continues to buy too. And then you could see uh, Fidelity's uh, fund there, and then now this this includes Tether. Tether now has over seventy five thousand Bitcoin. That that's, I mean, it looks small on the chart, but seventy five thousand Bitcoin is over five billion dollars. So that's an enormous amount that Tether does not plan on selling. They're using that to boost their, their USDT, right? And, and, and all the others, of course, right? And honestly, this one also shows Coinbase only having 10,000. That's baloney. Coinbase has like $30 billion of the Bitcoin. That's not like showing up, right? I don't know how they, they do their accounting, but they have way, way more than what is displayed here, right? So, I mean, if you just do the math, there's only so many Bitcoin out there, right? 19 point something million. There's 2 million left waiting to be mined, but that's spread out over 100 years. So everyone's fighting for what exists, right? This is the time to be loading up while we are still low, okay? cheap uh, because it's going to be a lot higher in the future. I mean, something that, that's happening right now overseas is this. South Korea, they have kind of like a closed system for, for Bitcoin and their exchanges. So there's always this thing called the kimchi premium, <coughs> which basically describes how it's kind of like the Coinbase premium. But this is labeled kimchi premium. I don't know if that's kind of considered racist by saying that. But anyways, um, but, you know, to buy Bitcoin in South Korea has always been high, especially during bull markets. Right. It, it, it's just more expensive that way because they're just not as open as the other exchanges around the world. Um, you know, it's just the same thing. Like I said, with Coinbase, sometimes Coinbase, their price goes higher because the demand is so high. Right. So, I mean, this again shows you that this is not time to be fearful. There are a lot of people that are buying. There's a lot of companies buying, ETFs buying, everyone's buying, okay? So don't let any little volatility or little dip or blip in the road scare you out of your life-changing wealth, okay? Bitcoin will do that for many. Uh, this is an interesting chart. So basically this shows that, yeah, there are, there are people that have lost money. I mean, there's a lot of people that, well, at this point, there's not a whole lot compared to how many people are in gains. But there are a few people, let's say, that bought at top and they can't stand the volatility. So they decided to sell. And then that's when they see a realized loss. And if you look at that, and you look at previous times this has happened, 
Well, that this is a pretty good bottom indicator. And that's kind of funny considering where we are right now in the 60s, high 60s, right? Uh, there are still some people that are selling. But if you look at some previous times, like back in March of 2023, we had a major dip. And then we had a dip in September 2023. Those people that sold in September 2023 are kicking themselves. They must. Because that was basically the bottom right before we went from, what, 20-something thousand? Or, eh, I don't know, maybe 30-something thousand to where we are. Breaking to $70,000 before coming down, right? So, kind of an interesting chart to show you that... Yeah, the end may be near in terms of our current consolidation period, our current dip. Kind of interesting. Uh, other, just a bit last few things in terms of charts. I mean, again, you could only see these so many times, but this is from TechDev. I mean, this is as obvious or as clear as can be. I mean, again, look at what happened to Bitcoin last time around after it broke through all time highs. Um, and you can look at, you know, the MACD below flipping above um, and crossing over. And you look at right now, it's it's exactly the same. It, you know, it's, it's almost identical to the previous pump from 2021. It looks absolutely identical. So again, if you're looking at this, can you be bearish at this point? I, I don't know how you could be bearish if you're just looking at this. If this was an IQ test and you were you were told to to <laughs> to mark, is this is this bullish or bearish? Right? The answer would be bullish, not bearish. Um, short term, this is what it looks like. Right? We're forming a leg, a consolidation, and then we're gonna form another leg up and then another leg up. And this one is saying the next leg up is 100,000. That makes a whole lot of sense. I don't disagree there. And then on a longer term scale, where this cycle is going to end, well, I mean, you look at a parabolic curve, you know, generally speaking, it doesn't just do this, like moonshotting, it, it curves upwards, right? And if you look at Bitcoin's trajectory from that bottom point that I showed you guys, like that September point in 2023 till now, I mean, it, it looks like we're following this parabolic curve. But what comes next is going to be insane, right? That, that next push upwards, absolutely insane. And again, I like to remind you guys that we are still in April. We just hit April, in fact. The having event is coming in like two weeks, okay? So, all right. <laughs> um, so just think about that. I mean, we're talking about tops, or at least I am, and it's not, we're not even close. We're not even close to the, the end of this cycle. We're not even close to the end of this year. Okay. So moving on, uh, Bitcoin is doing quite well and it will do better. So don't give up. Uh, outside of Bitcoin, what about the alts? Alts are struggling a little bit more right now versus Bitcoin, but that's okay. Because, you know, these, these big boys that are buying up Bitcoin, hey, they're, they're gearing up to buy alts too. Uh, so Paradigm is trying to raise $850 million. And guess why they're doing that? They're wanting to invest in AI, games, DPIN, DeFi, everything, right? I mean, again, there's a lot of narratives for this cycle. I think they're all going to do fantastic. So the big boys are getting ready for that, too. We're hearing about a lot of funds being raised right now for the sole purpose of buying into these narratives, right? It's going to just drive things much, much higher as Bitcoin 
rises too. Uh, what else is there? Lastly, I guess this wormhole debuts at a $3 billion valuation with a massive airdrop. They airdrop like 6% or 8% of their, their total supply. Um, again, these airdrops, some of these airdrops are just going insane, insane. So, I mean, I, I, me personally, I, I never pay attention to airdrops, but I do think there are a lot of potential out there. A lot of these airdrops, especially the ones that have have been done on Solana, I mean, they, they've been absolutely killing it. People are making loads of money, free money, basically. People have made over seven figures just from the last airdrop from Jupiter, right? And I'm sure a lot of people made a ton with this. So, overall, pretty good pretty good what else can you say about that all right that is pretty much it let's do some q a All right, let me scroll up here. Make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> kimchi rolls. I don't like kimchi myself. But I know a lot of people do. Um, people say rate cuts are bad and you think it's good. Yes, it's good. Rate cuts are not bad, dude. Gabriel. Rate cuts are going to drive inflation higher, right? And those, and those that hold assets, like Bitcoiners, We'll see benefits from that. Inflation sucks for... Inflation sucks if you only hold cash. And that's because it makes goods and services more expensive, right? So that's why your buying power decreases. But inflation is awesome if you hold on hard assets like Bitcoin. And you could argue gold and silver and real estate and and anything else valuable. Inflation helps drive prices on assets higher. So inflation really sucks if you don't have assets and you only have cash. Uh, what do you think about Orca? It, it, it's a DEX on Solana. It's doing very well. I just don't ever hear anyone talk about it. It's always on Radium, but Orca itself, it's fine. It's been doing well. But like these days, if I'm trading, I always just go straight to Jupiter because Jupiter is an aggregator. It can pull from Orca or Radium and it does the job. And then, you know, I qualify for the next airdrop, right? So... Yeah. Ozara, I would not touch it um, because right now it's sky high. Rate cuts are usually in response to a weakening economy. Usually. That's not the case. It's because we had an unusual situation where inflation was too high and they had to raise rates to a, I mean, the fastest rate hike in history. So this is just a response to decreased elevator rates. So no, we're not in the usual time, nor were the hikes, however many hikes that happened in the last two years or three years.
future <laughs> future of AI equals ICP. I, I just had to laugh at that comment. Um, for some reason, I bought Jupiter off of Jupiter using Coinbase wallet, but Coinbase wallet won't let me send it to my cold wallet. That doesn't make sense. If your cold wallet supports Jupiter and you already have Jupiter in your Coinbase wallet, you could send it. You probably are not leaving enough soul because you need soul to pay for gas and you probably don't have any soul. That's why you can't send it. That's the only thing you have to worry about with self custody wallets, leaving enough crypto for gas. Robert. Big Red has major cows coming. Team said a major sex listing is signed. Waiting for announcement. Will we see all-time high soon? I have no idea, man. I have no idea. With memes, sometimes it's just random. Sometimes it's the right timing. I think I do feel like memes got suppressed recently because of Bitcoin, um, because of the consolidation. But once Bitcoin starts rolling again, People are going to feel good, start splurging in memes again. And that's when something like Big Red can start moving. How's my jogging? I don't jog, man, because of my knee. Well, the thing is, I'll say this and, I, and I'll say it again. Um, I've been on like a modified version of carnivore. So I do eat veggies, but I still try to keep it at minimal, but I still use, eat veggies and some fruits like berries and stuff, and mostly just all meats, fats, and, and protein. But I would say it's a dra dramatic improvement with my knee, which I didn't experience before because I've been on carnivore before and I didn't really experience much. But this time around, because my, I've been complaining how my knee is so bad. Like within two weeks into carnivore, my knee, the swelling just went away. The the stiffness, the the weakness in my knee completely disappeared. It was so sudden I didn't even realize it happened. And it's it's quite amazing. It's really quite amazing. Those of you guys that have like, I don't know, achy knees or 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 your your ankle or something that's like chronic pain that or you know weakness, you should try it because that it's been it's an amazing turnaround. Uh, everyone, hey Jordan, everyone talking about what Bitcoin prize is going to be 2024, 2025. What do you think would be the prize? What do you mean prize? Are you talking about how high it's going to be i don't know why you keep saying some kind of bitcoin oh you're you're typing wrong you mean price well that's what i've been talking about this whole time uh best food you had in miami i i actually i haven't eaten at that many restaurants in miami so i can't really say i i ate at some cuban places i don't yeah, I don't know. <coughs> that guy. Uh, Daw, father of memes. Richard Dawkins coined the, the term meme, dog coins. Well, since you sent a $50 super chat, I feel compelled to check it. Um, Two million market cap chart doesn't look that great. It's been out since the 25th. Like many memes, shoot up and then kind of like it didn't die. It's just holding. But I don't know. Like right now, like I said, the whole meme market a little bit down because I think Bitcoin is a little bit down, but. We can see all that change when Bitcoin forms the next leg up. 
uh tony is the pullback before the having that we're in now or should we expect another i i always said i don't expect it at all so it really depends on what your views are but i think we're already past that or we're not going to see it I mean, if it's a good hold, wormhole, Lazaro, I don't know. Yes, sure, hold it. George, how about Hemio? Vitalik Catcoin, is it still a good meme? No, I don't think it was ever a good meme. Meme crates died rolling into AI. I don't know about that. There are a lot of, I mean, obviously a lot of good plays in AI, but memes are certainly not dead. Uh, there are still a lot that have, I just picked up on that, that new one, meow. Cats in a dog's world. I can't believe that this is at 700 million. So this is like the fourth or fifth largest meme now, right under um, Boehm. I mean, there are still a lot that's doing like, crazy good like um that's incredible and i still hate cat memes but uh you know you can't ignore this as 714 million <coughs> any thoughts on staking meme coins uh on avalanche i don't know of any memes that you can stake I mean, a anything that these projects could do to make people hold is a good thing, right? Like, if they can come out with some staking mechanism to make you hold the memes, um, that would be awesome. Do you think BRC 20s will be the next narrative, especially because of runes? Well, BRC 20s are already hot. Um, it's just that a lot of people still does not, I mean, the infrastructure for BRC 20s is just not there yet. Once it's there and all wallets support it and it's really easy to trade, um, then I think it's gonna get more hot. Right now it's, it's hot only only because the insiders know what they're doing. But for vast majority of people, they still have no clue how to hold it, how to trade it, how to swap it, you know. Armageddon before the having. No, we're ready. To, we're only two weeks out, right? How many? Let's do counting. Uh, what am I looking for? There we go. I mean, literally, we're only two weeks out. 16 days until the halving. <coughs> Debt tensor, what do you think? Great utility and rev. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Uh, do a favor, please buy skew meme coin for $1. Probably not going to do that. <laughs> Considering your your avatar is skew or your name is skew, it doesn't it doesn't even show up. What squawk? Is this what is this what you're talking about with fifteen holders? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No, no thanks. Um, 
Hey, my friend, uh, been listening since 2021. Can you check out the numbers and caps on Hua, the first meme on Cosmos? These are not Cosmos. I don't even know of this list Cosmos chain. Yeah, it doesn't even show. Sorry, can't check it out. It doesn't even show up. Uh, let's see. Will you look at CatCoin? Why do people like cats? CatCoin down uh, 20% today. Holding 44 million. I mean, the chart doesn't look that bad. 62,000 holders. That's pretty impressive. 3 million liquidity locked. That's pretty good. But it's on BNB. Icky. That's no good. If if this wasn't on BNB, it'd probably be at 400 million. If this was on Seoul, probably 400 million. This one? What is it? Is this, is this on... Uh, is this also on BNB? Yeah, these are on BNB. Okay. See, if you're, if you're going to start a meme, do yourself a favor and don't start on BNB. <clears throat> it's just... Either do just Soul or ETH. That's really it. Doesn't look that good. Sorry. <coughs> Got a cat in dog's world from Solana chapter two airdrop. What do you mean Solana chapter two airdrop? What does that mean skipping stones? Um, <laughs> hey, got a nice little pump right here. 66.3, that's nice. Let's check my favorite food in the world. Man, Costco hot dogs, so, so strong. 63 million. What's incredible about this is um, I talked to the founder yesterday. I reached out and uh, he said he, this was all done organically. Like, that's quite incredible, you know. Um, not a whole lot of promotion, some partnerships, um, but that's it. Everything's done Organically, people just love Costco hot dog. Let's see, Big Red. Big Red is up a little bit, 10% today, 9 million. That's pretty good. Bat Cat on Solana. Hey, look at this. I just noticed the cock. Uh, no. Uh, I would say that's a dead project right there. Tommy, okay. Yeah, we're getting a little push today. A little push. It's nice. I 
I use radium the first time, but you yeah, how is that actually a meme coin that just came out? Hey, George, thoughts on moving to Orlando? Uh, yeah, Orlando's my, my favorite city in the world. You got to love that traffic and those traffic lights and the humid weather and all the tourists clogging up all the streets and restaurants and everywhere else. Got to love, got to love those things. Um... I guess people, I guess people know what Paul's going to say. You know, like stuff like this makes me wonder, you know, are, are people within like these FOS, FOMC board governors or directors or presidents, whether like they leak stuff out or they're buying like, you know, we know Paul's going to speak at 12, but then all of a sudden things are turning around. It's so like, what do they know, right? U.S. market is turning around too. Like, what do they know, you know, ahead of time that we don't, right? It makes you wonder. <coughs> Stash. 12 million market cap. Uh, from a chart perspective, it doesn't look bad. A thousand holders, a little bit low, but okay. Liquidity under a million, that's a little low. That needs to be bu bumped up. Um, the team needs to take some donations and, and lock it into the liquidity pool. Okay. Decent, but you know what? Again, it's a cat with a mustache. I just don't like cats. Into the cosmos. I appreciate that. And you you made the right move. Who the hell comes to Orlando during spring break anyways? A lot of people. That's why it's jam-packed. Based AI. It's, it doesn't even have a token listed. Ram just showed your stream on crypto banter. <laughs> wow. Ran is a degen too. He loves memes. Everyone tunes in just for memes now. Um Yeah, I, I still think Pup I still think Pup is a uh, is undervalued. Um what else is there? I think that's it. <laughs> Bat Cat. Yeah, I pulled up Bat Cat.
Eleven K market cap? That doesn't even make any sense. This thing's dead. Number one, bubble. Bubble node. That doesn't even sound like a meme. Uh, platform provided a high speed RPC node for various blockchain network. 218 followers. <laughs> I don't know what project this is, but yeah. Wrong chart. BDC is the ticket for Batcat. Well, I'm just going to stop you right there. If they stole BDC as a symbol, it gets no support from me ever. <coughs> that guy. Richard Dawkins tweeted about Daw and Elon Musk laughed at it. Don't think he's ever done that besides Doge. What do you think about Musk and meme coins? Well, obviously, I like memes. That's why I've been covering a lot more of it. Um, as for Elon, I think he has a lot of trouble ahead because uh, people do not want EVs anymore. Sales are dropping. Basically, everyone that wants it, everyone that wanted an EV bought one. And there's like, you know, and most people don't want an EV car. So Elon has problems there with Tesla. Uh and neither of what you said helped Daw in any way. <laughs> Bio, new member, welcome. Souls pumping again up to 190. Hey, it flipped BNB. Soul flipped BNB. Now it's coming after Tether. I'm still waiting for Soul to flip Ethereum. I think it's going to happen. I just don't know why. I mean, not why. I do know why. I don't know when, but hopefully by the end of the year. <coughs> Soul will never flip ETH. Never say never, man. They're not that far off. Can you look into LCX? They're they're an exchange. Yeah, they're exchange and then some people some people some projects have listed on LCX unless unless I'm thinking about something else. Yeah, next generation cryptocurrency exchange. Universe of tokenized investments. Oh, I guess they're exchange based on um RWA, like tokenizing real world assets. Okay. I mean, decent enough. Say decent enough. Bayo, big super chat. Thank you. Um, what's Tesla stock today? Ooh, Tesla stock, not doing good. I need my own. All right, guys. 
Cats in a dog world appeared in my phantom wallet today. Can anyone explain? Ooh. Well, if you got some free, I guess meow. Is it meow? Or I, what is it? Cats in a dog's. What, I, I forgot what the symbol is. Yeah, okay, meow. That. Well, if you got airdrop some of this, then I mean, just consider it free money. I tried using ETH again because of base means, but after using Soul, everything feels so insanely slow, and any feel, fees just feel so expensive. That's why I don't. I haven't messed with NMCT. I haven't messed with any base memes or ETH memes for that reason. I don't like want to buy ETH to do any of that. That's why I'm sticking with Soul. I mean, it's just if you trade on Jupiter, you realize how fast everything is. Now, granted, I haven't used an Aerodrome Finance yet, but still, I mean, when you're transfer ETH, you gotta wait minutes, and everything costs so much, and everything, it's just, it's just not, not, uh, not convenient and costly. That's really it. Um, all right, guys. So to conclude, you know what, Bitcoin, see a little upwards movement, but we have a big FOMC, uh, not FOMC, but we have a big Powell speech coming up around noontime. We'll see what he says. If he's dovish, it's going to be good, really good for the market. And uh, you know what? Stay strong, my friends. Tune in tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll have a good old time tonight, like always. Smash out a like, subscribe to the channel. Have a good one. Take care.